For those that do not know, Mount Katahdin is the northern terminus of the Appalachian Trail, a trail that spans almost 2,200 miles from Springer Mountain in Georgia to a man-made sign on top of Mount Katahdin. Thousands attempt this trail every year, but only a small percentage achieve it. One day, I hope to set out to summit this mountain and to touch this sign along with my wife and children. I also love topography. The highs and lows can represent so much of what we go through in life. After about a year of trying, I successfully learned how to make topographic maps. This would allow me to carve these maps on my CNC, and I want to share this with you. So I hope you enjoy this video as I go through the process of how to make a topographic map of Mount Katahdin. So the first thing you're going to do is just pull up your web browser. I use Google. And in the Google search bar, type in touch terrain. And this is going to pull up the website that allows you to zoom in on a map. It's just the very first one. All right, so this is what it comes to every time I've opened up this website. It's somewhere in the middle of Wyoming. So I start out by zooming out to see the continental US and then I'm gonna scroll over here to Maine and then I'll just zoom in. Mount Katahdin. This is this mountain right here. Now, if you hit this button right here, it's going to bring your box back. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and I will recenter that box as well. Now, I want to capture a little bit further this way a little bit further this way and when you're doing this you can play with it however you want to you can adjust it crop it however you want now you see this right here it says hill shade layer so this allows you to zoom out to just uh, no transparency where it just shows the map or you can come all the way in and see full grayscale and then your gamma just adjust the darkness I'm just going to keep it where it's at. So I'm going to come down here to where this 3D printer options is. Uh, to my understanding, this is uh, really a website that allows you to create three-dimensional, uh, three-dimensional printed topographical maps. Well, it's the same file type that you use to do a three-dimensional carving. So there's a few adjustments that I like to make. I'm going to change this from 0.4 to 0.2. I think that just refines your resolution. And then I am going to keep my model base thickness at one millimeter and I'm not adjusting my vertical exaggeration. I want to keep that uh, the Z scale as accurate as possible. And then you just come down here and you hit save options to URL. and so then you hit export and then it'll bring you to another page which allows you to preview the actual file and we will do that to make sure that it's what we want. So here you go. So here's a topographical model of Mount Katahdin. I actually really like the way this looks. So I'm satisfied with it. So I'm going to come over here to download zip file and I'm going to download the zip file directly to my computer. After it downloads, you have to extract the file to whatever folder you want it to go to. Uh, for this case, I'm just going to 
extract it to the same folder it downloads to. All right, the next step is to open up whatever uh, CAD program you're gonna use to design your modeling and to uh, create your toolpaths. Um, I use VCarve Pro, so I'm going to create a new file. And within this job setup, I'm going to set the material size. Now I've established that I'm using a 10 inch by nine inch by three inch piece of material. And we hit okay. And then when you're dealing with uh, three dimensional models, uh, this file type is an STL file. So to load that into VCarve, you come down to modeling tab and you're gonna come up here and you're just gonna import that file from the location in which we saved it. Now I saved it directly to the same file that I downloaded the zip file to. Now in this section, you're going to change the dimensions of the model. Now right now it's loaded as a 60 inch by 80 inch by 15 inch tall model. Obviously that's not what we're working with, so we will adjust that. Uh, I've got it set to 10 inches by, well, if we're keeping it proportionate, it's 10 inches by seven and a half inches by 1.9 inches. So we will hit apply. We will come back to our 2D view, which shows the gray scale of the model. The lighter the color means the taller of the, the tallest part of the model and the darker the color means the lowest part of the model. Now, as you can see, this model is actually smaller than my job piece, which I will fine tune this to fit the way that I want it. And uh, when you're doing this, you will respectfully have to do the same thing. All right, now that I have the model set up, the way that I want it on my workpiece, and uh, it's time to go ahead and create the tool paths. I did use a quarter inch end mill for the roughing pass, and I used a two millimeter tapered ball nose to do the detail pass. So this is what the model is gonna look like. So I'm pretty satisfied with it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save my G codes that way I can import them into my post processor. Now I use Easel as my post processor, but if you have any other system that you'd like to use, you can use it too. Well, that basically wraps up the commentary part of the video. I don't wanna bore you anymore, but this part of the video is basically where you just load your G-code into Easel and you run it like any other file.